George Barlow at this moment, 21 and a half years old, combat veteran. He's been in the Marine Corps three or four years at this point. He's been in combat now for over a year yeah. with these different islands. He's platoon leader as a buck sergeant of your platoon. He's got 40 or 50 men under him. So tell us what happened that night by the airfield. Well, what happened that night was the fact that uh, we were going to set up a line of defense because we were making small progress, but we were making progress, and we couldn't at any time allow infiltration, the Japs, to get behind our lines. Of course, they had ways of doing it. But when uh, George came to us, uh, we had no knowledge. There were just five of us in the hole. And uh, he said to uh, uh, the, uh, that was five including him, but he said to us, I'm gonna be with you tonight. He says, we're gonna set up this, our machine gun in this position. And he says, we have to make sure that we don't allow any infiltration tonight. And I says, well, where's our regular squad leader? He says, they're in all along the line here already set up for the night. So he, he says to us, we're gonna take over the, the anti-aircraft position. So we move toward dusk, we move the machine gun, the tripod, the ammunition, and when we get up there, we find out that the gun itself has been destroyed. So we go into the position, set up the gun, and everybody takes a crouch position around the emplacement. Now, something started to happen. Either we didn't realize it at first, or it was, uh, or we didn't think it had any importance. But what we later realized was the fact that it's an anti-aircraft position. Where would they keep the ammunition for the position but underneath the gun itself? So what we didn't realize was the cave was underneath the position and that's where they stored the ammunition because before too long we heard fire and smoke and Japanese coming out of the cave. So I don't know what it was, but either we wanted to see if there was an entrance to the cave, but we looked over the edge of the parapet wall and obviously there were the live Japanese in the cave and they detected us. They probably knew we were there anyhow because of the movement around the emplacement itself. So when they lobbed the grenade up, and I have no ideas to the hour, George said grenade. He was the closest to it. He went over to the grenade, and he smothered the grenade, and the grenade went off. I, I don't know how I got alongside of him, but I got alongside of him, and I asked. Then I could see that he was wounded severely, and I asked, how bad, and he, he asked me, how bad am I hit? And I says, it looks very bad to me, George. He says, please don't leave me here to die. And I said, George, if there's anything I can do, we'll do it tonight. So I yelled to the three other guys, go get a corpsman. Well, it's pitch black out. We were told before the combat started, stay in the hole overnight, because if you're not gonna get shot by the Japanese, you're gonna get shot by one of your fellow Marines because you, you don't want any movement at night. You wanna be strictly undetected. So what can I say? I'm a, pro, I'm a PFC. I look to the guys and I see two of them and go get a corpsman. No response. Now, I don't know what flashed in my mind. You can't tell them to go get a corpsman. If you, want, if, you, if you want to do it, do it yourself. So I says, okay, I'll, I'll, go get, I'll, I'll go look for the CP, see if I can get a corpsman. And finally I get back to the command post, which is nothing but a bomb dot shell hole. And our captain, Captain uh, Joe McCarthy's in the hole. 
and I says, I need a corpsman. He says, what happened? And I said, Sergeant Barlow just took a grenade. He's severely wounded. And he says to me, well, do you think he can live till morning? And I says, well, honestly, he's injured very bad. He's bleeding very bad. I don't know what can be done, but can I have the corpsman? He says, you can't have the corpsman. The corpsman's the only thing we have left, and we, go, we still have more combat to, to go. And he says, I, I can't give you my only company corpsman to save you. And if, if he lives to morning, then maybe we can do something for him. Well, I realized he, he wasn't going to live till morning, so I go back to the hole there again. I don't know where I'm going. So I happened to wander in, and I don't know why I wandered into the entrance of the cave because the, the, there was no opening behind the emplacement. So I was on the other side coming toward our line and I'm wandering into the cave and there's smoke and small arms fire going off and Japanese talking and everything else. And I, I, I don't have anything to, to fight with. So I just turned around and ran out of there because I knew we were up right above. So I wouldn't crawl back above. Well, now we're, you know, we're really detected now. Well, I can't account for the time or the, or the hours or anything else. But I don't know whether we left George there or whether we tried to at least get him out of the emplacement, thinking there might be more grenades that they were gonna throw up. So anyhow, by morning, the other two fellows were hugging the side of the emplacement in daybreaks. And now we could see troop movement, we could see things that were going on. We could see our location and everything. And I looked over to my two other members of the squad and they're suffering combat fatigue. And I said, what, what am I gonna do? So I saw, uh, I yelled for a corpsman. I said, corpsman, that corpsman comes by. Says you better take these two fellows back to the battalion aid station because I don't think they're crying, they're shaking. I don't think they're gonna be much good from here on in. So he went and took them back and they were evacuated. I have no idea whether they ever returned to combat or not. From that day forward, now that was March the 1st. From that day forward, we had close to 14 more days of combat. I was a single rifleman. I had no squad members around me. I have no idea who was in the foxhole with me or without me. And uh, until we got to the other end of the island, uh, opposition was getting less and less day by day. We had more firepower. We were putting more rockets off of Jeep launchers into the vicinity. And then finally, we got the island at our section, our area, the island was secured and that was on uh, March the 16th, and I think we stayed on shore overnight and evacuated on March the 17th.